Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's been a long week. <laughs> um, I got to be off work for a couple weeks, which was nice. Um, got a lot of yard work done outside. Um, got to spend some time with the family, um, with Jessica and Caroline, uh, which obviously I enjoyed thoroughly. But um, I was back to work this week, which, as you know, I told you Sunday I would try to get a video up Monday or Tuesday, and that didn't work out. And then Wednesday and Thursday ended up not working out. So anyway, um, here we are Friday evening. Um, I just got home from work a little bit ago. Um, Caroline's napping upstairs, so I went ahead and came outside so I'm disturbing them. Um, but anyway, we're here. Um, I've got a lesson for you guys tonight. Um, it's either going to be really short or really long. I don't know. I've got a lot of notes I've took. Um, going going so long without teaching um, made it really easy um, to come up with a lesson and, and, and expound upon it. So I thought about even splitting this up into multiple um, lessons. And if, if I get halfway through it and decide that's what I want to do or that's what God wants me to do, then I'll stop. I'll make another one in a couple of days. But I think we'll just move forward with it um, and see what happens. Um, but if you'll remember, several weeks ago, I asked you guys, you know, we, we moved away from the Daniel study that we were doing, um, uh, which was really good. We learned a lot from that, but we needed something else to move toward. And I felt led to ask you guys what you wanted um, to learn about or if there were any specific topics that you wanted to cover. And one of the ones that you guys mentioned was... Um, you wanted to talk about dealing with people. And this is obviously a, a fairly broad topic, but I, I know where you're coming from. Um, I, I like to think it's not been that long since I was in high school, but um, it's, it's, it's becoming, it's, it's been a while since I was in school. But uh, I, I did get to thinking about that. I got to thinking about what it means to you guys um, when we talk about dealing with people. Um, you know, because there's all kinds of people out there in the world. There's people that we get along with, people we don't get along with. There's Christians and non-Christians, you know. Um, there's, there, there's rude people and nice people and uh, all that. So I, I got to thinking about it. I'm like, what, what would best um, serve these specific youth that I'm teaching or, or any youth that happen to stumble across this and probably even any adults that um, get the opportunity to see this video as well. Um, uh, what, what, what does that mean? What does that mean to deal with other people? So uh, this is actually going to be a series. Um, even if we get back to church pretty soon, which it sounds like based on the governor's decisions and, and all that, we, we should be getting back to church pretty soon. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, but even when we get back, I'm going to continue this study on Sunday mornings. And I'm just going to call it dealing with people. Um, and, and we're going to um, go through uh, several different things. I'd, it'll probably last about f somewhere between four and six weeks, like I said, just depending on, on how they go. But um, uh, t today, tonight, we're going to talk about communicating with people. How, how do you communicate with people? And, and I gave you a bit of a preview um, on Sunday when I made that little video of me driving uh, the Mini around. Um, uh, and that's something I like to do. I like to drive and clear my head. But um, anyway... Uh, how do we communicate with people is what we're going to talk about tonight. And uh, Also, as a side note, um, I don't know if I'll be able to post this video on Facebook or not. When I tried to post last week's video to Facebook, um, Facebook was just like, nah, man, you can't post that here. I, I don't know why. Um, it was either the format or whatever. I'm using OBS Studio um, to record these because it's something I'm familiar with um, from gaming and stuff. So... Maybe that's why, I don't know. So if this one ends up on YouTube again, I'm not trying to promote my YouTube channel or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not a YouTuber. But um, if that's where I have to post it, that's where I have to post it. It doesn't matter as long as you guys get to see it. But anyway, uh, anyways, moving on. Um, tonight, talking about communicating with people. And I actually have quite a bit of scripture here. Um, so I'll, I'll try to remember to put a timestamp. Um, if I put this on YouTube, I'll try to put a timestamp around where is this five minutes so that you can see the scripture. 
Um, you can come back to it if you want to, because I know this is a lot. But um, the first two scriptures, the um, the first one from Mark chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 16, are going to be talking about communicating with friends. All right, And then Mark chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 4 are going to be the verses talking about um, when we get to the second part, which is going to be communicating with uh, your enemies. Um, and, and I'll be more, way more specific as we get into it. But um, um, but there's the verses um, as we get ready to get started here. Um, and I will bring up the scripture on the screen again so that you don't have to um, uh, you don't have to have it. Um, sorry, so that you don't have to have your Bible or anything. Yeah, you can, and I would encourage you to have your Bible with you. But if you don't, it's right here on the screen. <laughs> Um, but anyway, let's look at a few examples here of how um, Jesus communicated with his friends. And uh, when I say friends here, obviously, I'm talking about the disciples. Um, I think that's a great example of friendship with Jesus. Um, and it probably was, you know, as, as strong as a, of a friendship as you could have. Um, but, and of course, it was a a master-student relationship. It wasn't like two best friends, you know, chilling by the river, um, <laughs> fishing. But um, but they were very close. And obviously, Jesus did love the disciples. So what, what better example do we have of how to communicate with our friends? So let's get started. Um, the first section here is from Mark chapter 4, uh, verses 35 through 41. Um, pretty familiar passage here. Um, let me let me turn the music off. It's going to distract me. <laughs> um, start in verse 35. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were uh, breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion, uh, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the next passage. This is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18. It says, uh, Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do you say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood was not revealed that, has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So here we do see a few examples of how Jesus talked uh, to his disciples. Um, Uh, as we've mentioned before, uh, I know I've mentioned it in my other class. I, I think I've mentioned it in the youth class, but if not, here you go. Uh, it's important to remember that even though the disciples were chosen by Jesus, and that does, in a way, kind of make them special, uh, they were still human. And we need to remember that the disciples were just human. Um, and so... Uh, we see in the first passage that um, Jesus was asleep. Uh, it says in the stern of the boat, which was the uh, the bottom of the boat down underneath. Uh, and he was laying down out there, um, it says on a cushion. So he was, you know, I guess as comfortable as you can get uh, on a boat like that in the middle of a storm. And uh, the important thing to remember here is that uh, the disciples had just witnessed several miracles that Jesus performed. Um, there were several things specifically that 
that they had saw just just before they got on this boat. So they knew what Jesus was capable of. They knew that he was able to perform miracles. Yet, not a couple hours later, probably, they're on this boat, the storm kicks up, and they start freaking out. And they go to Jesus, and they're like, what are you doing sleeping? Uh, Do you not even care that this boat uh, is breaking apart, and and we're all going to die? And uh, and I, I love what Jesus does because uh, I, I think a lot of us, if we were sleeping comfortably, uh, we probably would have said, leave me alone. Go away. Don't talk to me right now. It'll be fine. God God will take care of us. But instead, he doesn't. He, he gets up and he goes and, and he does uh, what he does often with the disciples. And, and he speaks to the, the sea and, and the winds and he says, peace be still. Um, the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. So Jesus shows his power to the disciples, right? He shows the power of God. He, he calms the sea. And the thing I think is important here is, is that just like he always does, he uses this instance as a teaching moment. He could have got very frustrated with them. Don't you know what I'm capable of? Go back, you know, you should lay here and sleep with me. You you know um, what God through me can do, so don't worry about it. But he doesn't. He doesn't get frustrated with them. He doesn't um, uh, anything like that. He he says, uh, "Peace be still." The wind calm, and he said, "Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith?" In other words, have you saw all that God can do through me, and you still have no faith? Uh, and so uh, he, uh, he uses it as a teaching moment. He uses it as, as a time to, um, uh, tell, to show these disciples, have faith, know what God can do through me. Um, because Jesus knew that uh, he had to teach the disciples because uh, they would be the ones who would then uh, teach others, you know, disciples, making disciples, what we've been talking about on Wednesday nights. Um, He knew that that's what the disciples were going to do. So he had to teach them what it meant to have faith. So, and then, and then we move on to the second passage here. This is in Matthew. Um, And this, uh, this is the section where um, Peter, um, it says, you know, the the title here on, on the English Standard Version says, Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ. So this, uh, once again, is a, a time where um, Jesus is teaching them a lesson, but uh, he does so in the form of a conversation with Peter. He says, um, "Who do people say the Son of Man is?" And 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 they, you know, because they did that. Not everyone understood um, this whole Messiah thing, and so people would would hear the rumors of of Jesus and the things that he was accomplishing, and. They would say, "Oh, that's just John the Baptist, or that's you know Elijah, or that's Jeremiah, or one of the prophets." And um, it's because they didn't fully understand who Jesus was. And so, at this moment, we see Peter, uh, at least Peter, if not several of the other disciples, come to the realization that this is the Christ, the Son of the Living God, uh, the Messiah, the one that the the Scriptures spoke of. Um, so, w- what? What does this have to do with how to talk to your friends? Um, because I, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not the Messiah. <laughs> None of us are, right? Um, we, can't, uh, we can't teach lessons even to our friends like Jesus did. Um, but, uh, and maybe not, but what we can do, uh, that Jesus, what Jesus did that we can do is... We can show our friends who we are by the way that we talk to them. Um, because that's what Jesus did. He showed them who he was uh, through, in, in both passages. When he's on the boat, he shows them through calming the storm. Uh, when he's talking to them here, he shows them by them actually, uh, he's pointing out that they've realized who he is. And so uh, what we can do with our friends is we can make sure that through our conversations that, um, and, and 
and I'm not just talking about face-to-face conversations, obviously, but um, when we communicate with our friends, they need to know who we are. And I don't mean our names. and you, you know what I mean, who we really are. Um, and as Christians, for, first and foremost, our friends should know that we are Christians. Um, there, there shouldn't be, um, we shouldn't have a single friend that doesn't know that we're a Christian. Um, and what I mean by that is you need to be consciously thinking about the things that you say to your friends. And, um, you know, when I was thinking about this, I was like, you know, if I just read the title of this and said, I'm going to tell you how to talk to your friends, most of you would probably be like, eh, I'm not going to watch that video. I know how to talk to my friends. But this is the part that, it, that made me think of this lesson um, that this is what God put on my heart. I can recall many times where I've had conversations with my friends, Christian friends, that I shouldn't have had. You know, I, I can think of times, especially in my younger days, where, you know, we had conversations about things that we never should have been having conversations about. And I did it because, and I'm guessing, you know, this was probably my thought process as a younger person. Um, they're Christian too. I'm a Christian. They're a Christian. So, like we've got this understanding so I can, I can talk about this girl or I can talk about this video I saw and it'll be fine because we're both Christians and we understand that. Is it though? Is, is that the way we should be talking to other Christians? Absolutely not. Even if we know for sure that we're not going to be overheard by someone, which that's one of the main reasons you shouldn't. But even if you know you're not going to get overheard, you're promoting those ideas. You're, promote, you're, you're bringing those things up in your mind and thinking about them and dwelling on them. And the Bible says specifically not to do that, whether, whether you're just thinking about it or talking to your friends. So um, I also ask you to think, you know, do you know for sure that that friend's saved? You know, do you know for sure that they're Christian? Because uh, it could be that um, you have these conversations about these things you shouldn't and you're actually leading them further and further away from Christ. So be conscious of what you're talking about to your friends. Um, I, like I said, I can think of very specific examples where I hope and pray I didn't ruin a testimony with someone because I, I didn't put that filter up or anything because I said, I'm a Christian, they're a Christian, it'll be fine. So uh, make sure you're, you're being conscious of that. Um, you want to always sound like a Christian, even amongst Christians. Um, all right, so uh, the last thing I want to touch on uh, on this is this doesn't just apply to conversations. It doesn't just apply to um, speaking in person. Um, it applies to text messages. Um, I'm well aware that there are many different fo- forms of uh, digital communication. Um, the, you know, I've got group chats with some of my friends. Um, I know that apps exist that you know, maybe your parents don't know about. Maybe they can't check them. I don't know. Uh, you, shouldn't, that you shouldn't have anything like that. Maybe you do. It doesn't matter. All right? it, it doesn't matter what form of communication it is. You need to always sound like a Christian. Um, and that, that even goes to the things that you share on Facebook or any form of social media. You know, I think about, you know, there's certain things that, that I've seen on Facebook that I thought, you know, that's, that's really funny, but maybe it has like one little cuss word in there or something. And I'm like, should I post that? And I found myself before thinking in my head, what if my dad saw that on Facebook? Or what if brother Brett said, saw that on Facebook? And I was like, nah, I better not share it. But that's not the right way to approach it. And and they would even tell you that. My dad or Brett both would tell you, that's not good enough. You, you, shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't hold them to that standard. It, you should think, what if Jesus saw this? Because he's going to. Uh, so make sure that the way you act in person, uh, on the phone, um, any form of communication that you have with your friends uh, and acquaintances and, and people like that, make sure that it's obvious that you're a Christian. Um, 
All right, we're up to 20 minutes now. <laughs> so I am going to split this into two different videos. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and make the other one right now, but I may post it at a later date. Um, but uh, I'm going to continue this uh, in another video, and we're going to discuss um, how to talk to enemies. So, uh, and that's going to be very important because uh, I, I don't want to just talk about um, uh, people we don't get along with and stuff like that, but I, I want to talk about um, what it's actually like to have a conversation with someone that uh, not only doesn't agree with your beliefs, but is actively persecuting those beliefs. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, I, uh, like I said, I'm going to split this into two different videos. Um, so uh, look for the next one probably just in a couple days. Um, and um, I forgot what else I was going to say. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for watching this. Um, I, uh, I look forward to um, getting to see you guys again um, and have actual class. Um, I've got some things uh, up my sleeve, things I'm, I would like to do. Um, when we get back together, uh, maybe involving food, maybe. Um, but so I'm looking forward to it. Um, thank you for watching this video. Um, be sure and catch the next one so you can get the second part to this. Um, but I'm going to do something I, I forgot to do on the first video is I'm going to close this in prayer. So. Um, if you don't mind, if you're somewhere where you can bow your head, close your eyes, do it. If not, don't worry about it. Um, just remember to pray on your own later. Um, and um, like I said, I look forward um, to uh, the next one. But uh, anyway, let me pray and I'll end this video. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this evening. Lord, I thank you for this week. Lord, I thank you for a, a good week back at work for me. I hope that uh, all the guys had a good week at school, um, and I know they're not at school, but I hope they had a good week um, uh, doing the online schooling and everything, Lord. Just be with each, each and every one of them, Lord. Help us to remember that it doesn't matter where we are, uh, whether it's virtually or in person, we need to be representative of you, and we need to be uh, the best example that we can possibly be of a Christian. Uh, so just help us to live as best we can like you. And Lord, uh, touch the ones that are sick. Lord, touch the ones that are being affected by this virus. Lord, um, be with the ones that own businesses and things that are being affected by this. Um, Lord, even even be with this economy and the leaders of the country, Lord, as we, uh, we don't know what the future holds. Lord, we thank you and praise you for all that you've done, Lord, and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, guys.